Welcome back and happy Thursday. Thank you guys for clicking on this video. In today's video, I'm going to talk about the upcoming isometric party-based fantasy CRPG by the name of Black Geyser Couriers of Darkness. We now have an official release date of March 17th, so next month. The game has been in early access since August of 2021, and most of the footage that I'm going to use in this video is from my experience with the initial stages of the early access, so keep that in mind. This video is going to be a little bit more off the cuff like a couple of the previous ones that I've been doing. Really busy IRL right now, but for very good reasons, and I'm excited to reveal some of that to you guys over the course of this month. Also, one more quick thing, don't buy my t-shirts because apparently this is what happens after a couple months. I'll have to look into it. So Black Geyser will be releasing for Windows, Mac, and Linux, and it will be on the GOG and Steam store. As you guys can see, it's being sold for $24.99 on the GOG store and also $24.99 on the Steam store. If you guys do like the GOG store, I appreciate you using my affiliate link before you purchase the game. It does help support the channel, so thank you very much for that. But I have the game on Steam. I know it's funny to say that after I tell you to buy it on GOG because they sent me a code back in August for Steam. As you guys can see, for the early access, Access, the reviews are mostly positive out of 184. That's a pretty good start for a really small company making a fairly complex CRPG. And my experience in the early access was also pretty good. There was some pretty big bugs though, but I'm assuming that those bugs have been sorted out now that they've had six or seven more months of development time. The company behind this game is called Grape Ocean Technologies, and they're a small team and they say that they're inspired by CRPG classics like Baldur's Gate and Icewind Dale. Now, I feel like a lot of companies are saying that their games are inspired by classics nowadays, but actually this game really, really does give off the classic feel, not only in visuals, but also in the way that the game plays. And that's mostly good, and I don't mean that in negative terms, because some of the older games didn't play as well as games do nowadays. It's actually a really, really strong aspect of this game. You do get that classic feel, and it's one of the highlights, in my opinion. In this game, you'll be exploring a land plagued by war, pestilence, and mysterious abductions, and you'll be uncovering the hidden legacy of your birth. The world that this takes place in is a brand new world called Yerengal, and it's a world where dark gods have brought nothing but venality and greed. You'll of course be creating your own character and choosing from five playable races, Human, Dwarf, Elf, Feldegug, and Rillo, and also 13 unique classes from four uh, distinct class groups, which are priest, outlaw, warrior, and wizard. Basically, there's a bunch of um, subclasses within those four categories. Before I get deeper into this video, I do want you guys to know that this game is real-time with pause. It is not turn-based. So this is another thing that kind of really does make it feel like the original Baldur's Gate games or Icewind Dale. You'll be recruiting a party of up to five characters. I know some of you guys will be happy with that. Some of you guys will want six, but five is pretty good because most of the most recent CRPGs we've been getting four party members like Celasta and Baldur's Gate 3. So five is a step up in my opinion, and that should be good. And you'll be meeting these companions as you travel through the world. And when I was playing the early access, I think I met four or five of the possible companions that you can recruit to your group and they all do have their own distinct personalities and the writing actually seems like it's pretty good the first character that i came across was a dwarf which made me instantly fall in love with this game because i love dwarven companions and then i came across a couple other ones some of them seemed like they were leaning towards the evil side other ones were good you know the traditional party recruitment for uh, a classic crpg for spells in this game, spells are recorded in spell slots for memorization, and there are two types of slots at each spell level, slots for base energy spells and slots for elevated energy spells. The elevated energy spells are typically the more powerful ones over the base energy spells. And once you use up a memorized spell, you have to basically rest, or they call it in this game, voluntary deep sleep event or something, something along those lines. There are 10 spell levels in total and six different spell classes. And there's also something in this game called special abilities. And any character can have special abilities. It doesn't have to be just a spellcaster. And these abilities are similar to spells in that you can only use them a limited amount of times in between resting. And actually on one of their websites here, it says each ability can be used once between two consecutive voluntary deep sleep events. Now, there's a couple more important things I want to mention. There are branching dialogues in this game. There are romance options. And perhaps the most important thing is the greed system. 
So whenever your character acts greedily in the world, perhaps you loot someone that you shouldn't be looting, or maybe you steal or uh, do something with donations in a temple, the kingdom around you will become even more chaotic, and it, this does directly affect gameplay. And some examples of the way that greed can affect gameplay are that prices might go up with merchants, some NPCs will become more suspicious of you and therefore unfriendly, lawful citizens might end up attacking you, and also loot scavengers and hostile adventure parties may appear after battles and attempt to seize your loot. So this is a really cool system that's going to make you think twice before you do certain things in the game. Perhaps it's worth it to loot some loot that's not yours because there's a really powerful weapon, but is it actually worth it getting that weapon when the NPCs around you might end up selling weapons for more? The decision's going to be up to you. And lastly, there are some crafting mechanics in this game. I don't think there's anything like blacksmithing or leatherworking or anything like that. All that I saw and all that I can see on the website is brewing and drying. So the brewing and drying skill offers the ability to craft potions and powders and potions you can use for various things and powders can actually be thrown at or planted on enemies for a set of negative effects or damage. So while you're out in the world exploring, you're likely going to want to gather uh, herbs and stuff like that so you can have the ingredients to do brewing and drying. So yeah, that is Black Geyser in about five minutes of mostly unscripted content. For $24.99, I'm pushing towards telling people that like these classic CRPGs to give this one a shot because I did have a good time in early access and that's a pretty affordable price. I'm obviously not sure about bugs on launch, but I do plan on giving this game a try as long as time permits, which I think it will in the middle of March. So be on the lookout for more Black Geyser content. And like I said before, if you want to help support the channel, consider purchasing it on the GOG store by clicking my link in the video description. You guys have a great one.